हे hey फ्रेंड्स नमस्ते आप सबका हार्दिक स्वागत है इस वीडियो के अंदर जिसके अंदर आज हम डिस्कस करने वाले द प्रोविजन जो कॉर्पोरेट सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी के साथ जुड़े हुए फ्रेंड्स काफी समय से ये एक ऐसा टॉपिक है जिसके अंदर लगातार अमेंडमेंट आ रहे थे सो स्टूडेंट वी आर सो कंफ्यूज बाई रीडिंग दैट फ्रॉम मॉड्यूल एंड दैट्स द रीजन उन सबके डाउट दूर करते हुए एकदम डिटेल में ए टू जी CSR के सारे प्रोविजन अलॉन्ग विथ रूल एंड अलॉन्ग विथ स्केड्यूल सेवन हम आज की इस वीडियो के अंदर एक साथ डिस्कस करने वाले फ्रेंड्स अगर मैं इस प्रोविजन की बात करूं CSR जो हम पढ़ने जा रहे हैं तो वो CA के दो लेवल पे अप्लाई होता है इंटरमीडिएट एंड सी ए फाइन अगर मैं बात करूं CA इंटरमीडिएट की तो ये जो प्रोविजन है वो उसके दो सब्जेक्ट को अफेक्ट करते हैं मेन अफेक्ट करता है उसके कॉर्पोरेट एंड अदर लॉज में कॉर्पोरेट लॉ चैप्टर नंबर नाइन एंड अगर आप ऑडिट की बात करो इंटरमीडिएट का तो उसमें भी कई कई जगह पे सीएसआर के क्वेश्चंस पूछे गए तो ये वीडियो ये दोनों सब्जेक्ट्स के लिए इंपॉर्टेंट है एंड अगर कोई सीए फाइनल का स्टूडेंट है और उसे सीएसआर के डाउट है तो भी ये वीडियो देख सकता है इट इज मोर देन इनफ बिकॉज इंटरमीडिएट लेवल एज फार मोर बेटर प्रोविजन इन डेप Compared to when it comes to CA, so आज की इस वीडियो के अंदर हम उस चीज के ऊपर पूरा डिस्कशन करेंगे फ्रेंड्स आप जब मेरे साथ ये लेक्चर पढ़ रहे हो तो आप बखूबी जानते हो कि मैं हमेशा कोई भी टॉपिक होता है वो आईसीए की मॉड्यूल में से लाइन बाय लाइन वर्ड बाय वर्ड डिस्कस करता हूं एंड दूसरी मेरा ये मानना है कि खाली वीडियो देखने से या लगातार सुनने से आप उतनी अच्छी तरीके से बातों को याद नहीं रख पाओगे बेहतर है कि आप वीडियो देखते देखते वीडियो के साथ साथ जब मैं आपको समय देता हूं लिखने के लिए आप उन प्रोविजन को कृपया लिखिए बात में नहीं वीडियो देखते देखते ही लिखिए एंड आई गिव यू इनफ टाइम टू कॉपी द प्रोविजन इन वीडियो लेक्चर इट सेल्फ सो अगर अभी आपके पास ये दो चीज नहीं है तो आप एक मिनट वीडियो को पॉज करके ये दोनों चीज आपके साथ ले लिए ले लीजिए बिकॉज इसके बिना ये लेक्चर अधूरा रहेगा एंड वी नॉट गेट दैट सेंस ऑफ लर्निंग दैट सेंस ऑफ सेटिस्फेक्शन फॉर वॉट We are watching this particular video. The very first thing is you should have the ICI module. In case अगर आपके पास ICI module नहीं है, तो आप mobile में या जो भी चीज़ में ये video देख रहे हो, उसके अलावा और एक device में soft copy में module को ले लीजिए। उसपे chapter nine के ऊपर आ जाइए, और chapter nine के अंदर you should be on page nine point thirty two because वहाँ से लेके ये CSR के provision शुरू होते हैं। दूसरी एक important चीज़ वो ये है कि आपके पास एक नोटबुक होनी चाहिए जिसके अंदर आप ये प्रोविजंस लिखोगे फ्रेंड्स मैं काफी सारा डिटेल्ड बोर्डवर्क यहां पे करूंगा तो आपको वो कॉपी नहीं करना है तब पर मैं आपको वीडियो के अंदर ही इनफ समय दूंगा और मैं बोलूंगा नाउ यू स्टार्ट कॉपिंग इट एट दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम यू नीड टू कॉपी द थिंग्स फ्रॉम द स्क्रीन यू आर सीइंग हियर इनटू योर नोटबुक सो एट द एंड जब आप ये वीडियो खत्म करते हो तो आपके कांसेप्ट्स क्लियर हो गए आपका मॉड्यूल रीडिंग हो चुका होगा आपके प्रैक्टिकल क्वेश्चंस हो चुके होंगे एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट आपकी नोटबुक भी बन चुकी तो खास आपके पास आईसीए मॉड्यूल एंड नोटबुक होनी बहुत ही जरूरी है नाउ फ्रेंड्स लेट अस स्टार्ट द डिस्कशन एसोसिएटेड विथ corporate social responsibility in that now friends one more thing which you know that whenever you learn anything with me i always try to bifurcate the same into various small small parts so that you can refer that parts also whenever the time is needed so compared to that if we see compared to that if we see then then in that case let's start with corporate
सोशल रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी in that section 135 and a category that is very 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 important provision we are going to see to it if i discuss of the outline of this particular section the outline of the provision then you can see that the very first we are going to discuss the general concept that is what is csr why csr was introduced to that provision then we will see to it other associated concepts friends almost you will not find in any of the videos this particular point of other associated concepts means here we get a reference of section 149 we get a reference of section 198 so we will discuss that first so that when the actual provisions come you get a cross connectivity of same then third we will discuss various definitions associated with section 135 fourth we will discuss applicability that when this particular provisions of section 135 will apply friends right now you are not required to write anything i'll give you enough of time to copy down all these things don't worry then we will see the provisions with respect to csr committee which i will abbreviate it as in this whole topic as csrc that is csr committee we will see everything with respect to that that how the csr committee is constituted what are the disclosures they had to be, to be done what is the duty of that particular csrc committee and csr committee and in which cases there is no need of uh, forming a csr committee then board of directors responsibilities agree that we are having a csr committee but still for certain things board of directors are actually responsible to implement the same then comes the csr amount that agree that the csr provisions are applicable but how much csr a company needs to do that we will see to it then in eighth part we will see to it csr implementation or how actually the csr will be done in 9 point we will see to it that what if the money remains unspent 
unspent CSR amount. Then we will see to it that there are some special instructions being given by central government. So kind of basically uh, before we see this CSR implementation, we will see that how the CSR expenditure can be done. Then we will see CSR CSR implementation. Then we will see unspent amount of CSR. Then what is to be done? Then we will see some special things that is uh, government is having some special instructions as far as the CSR is concerned. So we will have a look at that also. Let me just check it whether it will be the part of your syllabus officially or not. Yes, it's there. Special instructions to central government. We will see what are those instructions. Then in the 12th part, we will see to it the provisions regarding CSR entity. That is, if we are taking the help of any other organization, right, who is eligible to do that, then what is that? Then in 13th part, we will see CSR reporting. In 14th part, CSR impact analysis that what kind of business impact analysis it created in 15th part we will see to it schedule 7 in 16th part we will see to it various clarifications with respect to CSR, many times the practicals may come from there. And last, in 17th part, we will see to it the penalty. So, likewise, in 17 different parts, we are going to see this particular provisions associated with corporate social responsibility. So, what I request you first to do is we are pausing this video. We are pausing this particular video right and what you do is you copy down this in your notebook you just copy down that this in your notebook take a fresh page and start copying it and becoming D.
so friends this are the parts now we will start discussing each and every part in detail now friends let's start with the very first part that is the general concept associated with csr the very first now friends many times it happens that we say that the company is required to do csr people think that whatever kind of donations we do to ngo a general charity we do is that a part of csr then let me clarify csr is beyond general charity that the charity which is being done by company on a general basis is may be the part of csr but csr is beyond that because in csr when csr is applicable yes the company has to spend the money in good activities but apart from that the company has to maintain the set of records the set of documents the company has to create a separate committee csr committee and then the whole projects are being executed so csr is basically even much more beyond you can say the general charity being done now the provisions of csr came with a concept that if a company is doing very good then company is because of society company survives company grows company prospers it is because the society is supporting it and so it is a type of you can say an obligation which a successful company is giving back in form of something good in return to this society so it is based on some fundamental premises that someone has very rightly said goodness is the only investment that never fails when you do something good it's not your expense it's your investing and this is a type of an investment which is never ever going to fail right so it's very much pertinent that every company which is successful which is big should invest money to support the society because of which it has came back and csr is also important because the reason someone has very rightly again said that businesses cannot be successful when the society around it fails so for business to be successful society cannot fail so it's very important that the society should succeed if society succeeds in debt in bound in reverse the company will also succeed and with this fundamental premises friends law a new change was brought in the companies act that certain strong companies we will see to it in the third sorry in the fourth part the applicability certain strong companies needs to do corporate social responsibility that is something good for the fraternity for the society for the nation to which it belongs and it is incorporated now friend next i want to discuss in second part is other concepts
just in brief. Means we will discuss some concepts associated with CSR in brief. These are the sections which may be coming in any other chapter, but we will have a reference here. Or these are the sections which comes in detail in CA final. But the brief of that is needed because that is affecting the provisions of CSR. So that is what something we are going to discuss here. In this, if we go for the outline, then first we are going to discuss the provision of section 149. associated with independent director now friends bear in mind what is this concept of independent director then in detail it comes in ca final in detail it comes in ca final then why we are learning here because when we will see the composition of csr committee in that we need independent director so with that reference, we are focusing here the provision of independent directors. Now see. Is director in employment of company? Means is that director doing a job in the company? two situations if yes such a director is known as executive director and if the director is not doing the job in a company then such a director is known as non executive director just like a college when you go in a college to study certain faculties are there who are doing job in that college right officially there and certain are just coming on visiting basis so executive director non-executive director now if this non-executive director does non-executive director satisfies the conditions with respect to independence given under section 149 in section 149 we will learn in ca final there are so many conditions that that person is not a director of a company that person is not a uh, shareholder of a company that person is not having any kind of monetary relationship that is peculiar relationship blah 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 there are so many conditions which ensure that that person is no way directly or indirectly associated with the company so is that non-executive director satisfying the conditions given under 149 yes then such a director is known as independent director and if that is not fulfilling then that person is known as non-executive director only so we can say that executive directors who are doing job in the company they can never be independent but if the director is non-executive and satisfying the conditions then he will become independent director so we can say that all independent directors are non-executive directors but a non-executive director may or may not be an independent director so that depends that depends and we will see to it And is it so that every company is required to have independent director? Only certain specified companies to appoint the independent director. 
So there may be companies which are not required to appoint what independent directors. So this is one provision which will help us when we discuss the provisions associated with composition of CSR committee. So this is the first provision which we want to discuss. Then second is section 182. Political party contribution. Again, this will come in CA final. Now, what is this political party contribution? Any company can contribute to political party or for political purpose. in pursuance of section 182 now how this is relevant to us then political party contributions not considered as csm they are not treated as csm so this is also relevant then one more concept we need to see to it is section 2 clause 42 Again, it comes in CA final. But a brief of this we discussed in chapter number 9 when it was coming with respect to consolidation of financial statement. When it was with respect to consolidation of financial statement. Just a minute. Now see. Thus, company incorporated outside India. I'll tell it in short. Company incorporated outside India. Having place of business. And operations in India means if a company is incorporated in USA but is it having the place of business and doing any business operations in India yes then it is foreign company and if the company is incorporated outside India but it is not having any place of business in India or it is not doing any kind of business activity or operations in India then it is company incorporated outside India. Then it is company incorporated outside India. Now why I am clarifying this? Because foreign company, if the company is a foreign company, it has to comply with few provisions of companies act 2013 means the company is foreign company but it has to comply with companies act 2013 
with respect to its business operations in India. Means though the company is foreign company, but whatever business operations it is carrying on in India, it has to prepare books of accounts as per schedule, uh, books of accounts, it has to prepare financial statement as per schedule 3, it has to got it audited as per with the Indian chartered account and various other compliances need to be done. And apart from that, very important, why we are discussing this, it has to appoint one authorized representative in India. And why this will be important, this authorized representative will be the part of CSR committee because if that foreign company's business operations in India attracts the limit which is given under section 135, then even on that foreign company, that foreign company has to do CSR in India. And at that point, when this authorized representative will become the part of that CSR, so that's how the section 2 clause 42 is important. So bear in mind, all foreign companies are company incorporated outside India, but all company incorporated outside India may, may be a foreign company or not. Because for a company incorporated outside India, in order to become a foreign company, it needs to have its business operations and place of business in India. So this is the third other concept which will be helpful to us in our journey of CSR. The fourth is the concept of net profit. The fourth is the concept of net profit. Now what it says, so how this net profit is important? The amount of CSR is calculated as a percentage of net profit. It is calculated as a percentage of net profit. So it becomes very important that we decide that what is considered as net profit. Now see. They say net profit shall be calculated in pursuance, I mean to say in accordance of Section 198. I think this comes in accounts, your section 198, final accounts. So first we need to calculate the net profit under section 198. Net profit shall not include certain sums, any certain amount as may be prescribed and at present what is not considered in it is means what shall be excluded then any profits
from overseas branch of a company whether that branch is operated as a separate company or otherwise so that profit will not form the part of net profit and any dividend received from company in india which is covered in section 135 in the sense what then you can see that if there is we are company x or we are spark limited and we have done an investment in company a and that company a on that company a section 135 is applicable so that company a is already doing csr then the dividend which we receive from that company will not be the part of the income of this company so that it will not inflate the income making it liable to do more expenditure of csr so profits from any overseas branches and dividend received from indian csr compliance company will be excluded for the purpose of net profit and moreover see to it net profit in case of foreign company so then they say that when we are calculating this net profit based for a foreign company we need to see two things section 198 read with section 381 381 comes in ca final but then it says that net profit in case of foreign company means profit earned by foreign company from its business operations in india means that foreign company is having its business in usa in japan in germany and india then we will not see its overall net profit for 135 but for 135 we will only see the profits which it is earning from india and accordingly the whole calculation will be done for section 135 so this was also one of the important provision we need to remember right and then so see just just uh, i'll request that have a look at this the definition of uh, or calculation of not net profit which have, they have told see from module just read once see just read this particular definition of or how we calculate the net profit just have a look at it just read it once
so basically if you see then what they say net profit shall not include such sum as may be prescribed now which are this sum then you can say profits arising from any overseas branch and second is dividend received from indian company which are covered under section 135 so this two will not be included and apart from that we need to calculate the net profit based or in pursuance of section 198 and now friends in the series of this other concepts before we move to the actual provision one more definition is important one more definition is important or concept is important that is of net worth how this net worth is relevant because whether csr will be applicable or not is decided based on three criteria if any one of the criteria is attracted right then csr will be applicable one criteria is based on net worth the another is based on the turnover and the third is based on net profit so there when the net worth point comes we need to take the reference of the same so this is section 2 clause 57 this also comes in chapter 1 so what is the meaning of friends net worth paid up capital plus secured its premium and you need to learn by heart this because if they want to make their paper tough they can ask you the calculation based on it right so secured its premium plus reserves created out of profit plus pnl credit balance means basically profit right you add all this the aggregate value this is worth from this you deduct pnl debit balance in the sense either it will be pnl credit balance or debit balance this credit balance is profit debit balance is loss either of the one will be there then accumulated losses deferred revenue expenditure miscellaneous sundry expenditure not return on so you need to deduct all this and then what you get 
is the net worth. That is the amount of net worth. So you need to calculate whenever in the section 135 or impacting companies act the provision comes with respect to net worth. We need to calculate the net worth always based on what? Then you can say section 2 clause 57. And bear in mind when it comes to reserves created out of profit, very important. It reserves shall not include means this type of thing should be excluded shall not include reserves created out of revaluation of assets or reserves created by writing back the wrong depreciation or Reserves created by amalgamation. Right. So this reserves should not be included. So this is the concept of reserves. Now let us do one thing. Before we move to copying down this particular things, let us read this thing of reserve from module page 9.35. And in case if you are not having module, then you can just focus on the screen here. I'm taking you to that particular point of net worth. Right, read the definition of net worth first. Now see friends here, uh, let us see the example which they have given. I am talking with respect to this example file. Now what they are saying, the statutory auditors of company were required to issue a certificate on net worth of the company as per the requirement of the management, means management wanted that certificate, maybe for any purpose. As of 30th September 2020, fine, computed as per the provisions of Companies Act 2030. So, obvious, Section 2, Clause 57 will apply. Further, the question says the company had done fair valuation of its property, plant, and machinery in the current year, which was mistakenly taken into the retained earnings. What is this retained earnings? then it is reserves in the books of accounts. Please advise whether this fair valuation would be covered in net worth of the company as per the legal requirements. Just think for a second. On the top, you have the definition also of net worth. Just see to it. Then we go to the final answer.
Now, when this kind of answer is asked in exam as a form of case study, the very first you will write it down, the first point provisions of this act, and exactly you will copy down the definition. You can write the definition as it is given in a para form, or you can even write the definition which is which you will write in your notebook in this form. Any is allowed. Second point will be the facts of the case, and in that facts of the case, you will write down that company has done a para valuation of property, plant, and machinery. Second, they have included that in their retained earnings. Third, then you need to do analysis. Then you need to specifically focus on this, that all reserves created out of profit agree, but does not include reserves created out of revaluation of assets. That will not be covered. So that's why that fair valuation amount should be excluded. And then you should give the final answer like this, C. As per section 2 clause 57 of Companies Act 2013, any reserves created out of revaluation of assets does not form the part of net worth. We underline the above. The companies fair valued its property, plant and equipment and took that to the retained earnings. So even if the company has taken the fair valuation to the reserves in the books of its account, the resultant credit in reserves may be by any name would be in the category of reserves created out of revaluation of assets and which is specifically excluded in the definition. And hence, the company should not consider that while it is calculating what the reserves for the purpose of net worth. And apart from that, the auditor should also consider the matter relating to accounting this resource separately at the time of auditing the books of Account. So auditor should pinpoint also that that this should not be done. So basically, when you calculate reserves for calculating net worth, we will take the actual reserves as per books of accounts minus the revaluation reserves, and then the it will be added to the paid up capital. So friends, this was something related to you can say the five different concepts which I wanted you. to discuss before we move to the actual provisions of CSR and this forms the part of what the other relevant concepts right so now what I request is that before we move ahead copy down this in your notebook till penalty point you copy down now copy down this starting from here I sooner or later I'll gradually scroll up so what you need to do is first of all you need to take a screenshot and start copying from it gradually I'll keep on scrolling down the scene start copying this in the notebook because maintaining the notebook along with seeing the video will be the best practice believe me friends you will ever enjoy so i request everyone to copy down the same
now friends once you copy down all this other concepts now we move towards understanding the definitions which are connected with this particular concept so our third mean is the definitions now in this definitions the most important one is the definition of csr is the definition of csr the rest all are normal ones all the definitions connected with this particular chapter or not chapter with this particular concept in that the very first is we take is of corporate social responsibility means csr now here in this particular concept we have one schedule schedule 7 which gives you the illustrative list of activities that if you do that or activities connected to that it will be treated as corporate social responsibility so what they say the activities undertaken by company means done by company in pursuance pursuance means accordance of its statutory statutory means it was not compulsorily required to do but still it is doing because now it was not optionally required to do it is compulsory to be done by certain so statutory obligations <coughs> means liability laid down in this particular provisions of companies act laid down in act act mein kis mein in section 130 by and also in the rules and what is the meaning of rules here companies social responsibility policy rules 2014 and later on and later on what happened these rules are now repealed and now we have companies csr amendment rules 2021 so when any activity is done because of any legal obligation which is there either because of section 135 and you can say that this is known as what then you can say is known as csr but mean is but
doesn't include following so basically if you see then csr has two things one is what is csr and another is which type of activities are excluded from csr means are not at all considered as csr that is also the part of what the definition that is also the part of the definition so both of that is covered here So if you see in that, then the first is activities done in normal course of business. Uh, I'll discuss more uh, with respect to this uh, because I want to discuss here just a minute at this juncture I want to discuss one point uh, with respect to the research activity which was done during COVID that will be considered as you can say the CSR but I discuss that later on right now the main point is activities done in ordinary normal course of business will not be treated as CSR right so for example if your company is there right and it is selling notebooks now if your company is selling notebooks free of charge in some village right so that is not the part of CSR because the company was normally doing the same business which is doing so it is it might be because of some sample thing or it is might be because of promoting their own business so it will not be treated as CSR. second is activities done in foreign country that is done outside India so there is so much of need of funds in India a support in India then what is the sense of doing the activities outside India so even if the company does it will not be the part of CSR so for CSR the company has to do in India itself that is the point to be noted Third is contribution under section 182. Actually, 182 comes in CA final, but I give you reference right now in the other concepts, political contribution. So contribution is under one section 182. To political party then such contribution will also not be treated as CSR. So is it so that company should not donate to political party? No, 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 no. That donation company can give. That amount will not be the part of CSR. And moreover, in income tax, you will learn that whenever you contribute to political party by complying with some conditions, then you get a benefit of deduction in income tax under section 80 ggc under section 80 ggc activities benefiting only employees of company so for example if a company gets one hospital being constructed it will be the part of csr but if the company is getting one hospital constructed 
and the rules are that in that hospital only the employees of the company or the family members of the company can be admitted no one outsider can be admitted no one outsider is given the benefit then that expenditure is exclusively done by company for its employees so it is no more a csr it is more an employee welfare activity and the last two is activities done on sponsorship basis for deriving deriving means obtaining marketing benefits like for example if company provides free water let us say during uh, makes one stall and provides free water during navratri so now that is going to do the branding of that particular company it's on sponsorship basis right so company is going to get the marketing benefit so it is not that the company is giving benefit to society actually it is deriving the benefit from the society then it will not be treated as csr and bear in mind again i'm saying friends all these activities can be done what this definition is if these activities are done this will not be the part of csr so for csr you need to do extra things activities carried out for fulfillment of any statutory obligation means legal obligation under any other law for time being in force in india let me give you an hypothetical example for example if we have a pharma company right and when that pharma company got a license there was a requirement of the act that company has to every year donate 10% of medicines in government hospital now this is the requirement of that pharma license that medicine license and when company donates up to 10% it is not csr but if company donates more than 10% then extra will qualify for csr right so likewise if some other law requires some statutory obligation to be done then that will not be treated as csr it will not be the part of csr so mainly six things will not be the part of csr anything which is done in an ordinary course of business second if we talk with respect to anything which is done on sponsorship basis which is going to get the marketing benefit the third is for any legal compliance these three are normal fourth is you are doing is exclusively for your employees fifth for any political party and sixth is you are doing outside india you are doing outside india and in this case is it will not qualify for csr and the main is i want to discuss with you uh, the provisions associated with research which the government allowed that that should be done that's not an issue and what is this research and development expenses connected with research and development
डन इन नॉर्मल कोर्स ऑफ बिजनेस will be it will be treated as csa means though the research is being done in an ordinary course of business but if certain conditions are fulfilled it will be treated as csa because it has something associated with covid covid that was a pandemic situation which was created in order to cope up with them treated as csa if if all the following terms and conditions are satisfied means if all these conditions are satisfied then it will be treated as a part of csr so though it is done uh, as a research as a part of an ordinary course of business still it will be csr companies engaged in research and development activity means ordinary course of business of company is research and development research and development is done in collaboration that is jointly with organizations specified in schedule 7 means schedule 7 is having a list of organizations which are government connected organizations they are working for the benefit of public at large and they are established even by government so if our company is doing research in collaboration with them third r&d is of is in normal course of business of new vaccine new drugs or new medical devices now very important related to covid 19 related to covid 19 for financial year 2020 21 the year in which covid started 21 22 and 22 23 and the last condition is details of r&d activity is separately disclosed in annual report on csa included in board report remember friends board report was coming in chapter 9 itself so the main condition is uh, 
the task of the company is the is research and development activity that is the main task the company is doing in jointly in collaboration with government organization third it is for new vaccine new drugs or new medical devices not of malaria or anything else but of covid 19 so the center centric focus is covid 19 during three years and the details are exclusively disclosed in board report then you can say it will qualify as csr so if this is done after this three years then it will not be a part of csr but right now it will be a part of csr but all these conditions needs to be fulfilled this is one more And another is activity done in foreign still will be considered as CFR, CSR, if if all these conditions are satisfied. The activities of training of Indian sports personnel means Indian sport people representing state at national level or India at international level. So if for example if some personnel of Gujarat, a sportsman of Gujarat is going to represent Gujarat at the Indian national games and his training is getting been done outside India foreign training then also it will be considered as CSR so mean here is the training of sports so this is one of the main thing or main activity or one of the main definition which is connected with what the whole concept so the very first definition is definition of csr the definition of csr so the definition of csr is basically broken into two parts one is what csr means and another is what if you do is not considered as csr and in that also we have two major clarifications or exclusions one is with respect to normal course of business and another is with respect to what then you can say activities done in foreign country so now before we move ahead i would request you that copy down this in your notebook start copying this
of friends the first main definition right that is the definition of love now we have three four more definitions but those definitions are not that important as we saw this particular definition of love so csr definition was very very second important definition that is with respect to csr policy that is with respect to what csr policy right now what is covered in csr policy then it is a policy right which is going to guide about the approach that how the company is going to do csr and it also covers the guidelines which or the principles which can help in implementing and monitoring the whole project so basically it has two things so what csr policies it is a statement containing a approach and direction that is what we are going to do whether we are going to do the educational activity or we are going to do the activity related to medical field or we are going to do activities connected with uh, you can say uh, poverty eradication or eradicating malnutrition what is the activity we are going to do the approach and direction given by BOD based on recommendations of CSR committee. So CSR committee gives the recommendations and based on that, finally the approach and direction is decided by BOD and everything is noted down in a statement and that statement is known as CSR policy. And CSR policy also contains the guiding principles for selection of CSR activities for implementation of CSR activities and for monitoring of CSR activities including and formulation of annual action plan of CSR. So a statement which contains three things, the approach and direction, the guiding principles to achieve that approach and direction in that particular field. And along with that, the whole action plan that how we are going to do the CSR, the whole action plan, all these things are covered in one particular document. And that document is known as CSR policy. Then the next definition 
is CSR coming. So this is the basically a committee or you can say a team or you can say panel of board of directors constituted specifically for purpose of CSR like in audit chapter the next chapter chapter 10 you would have learned audit committee which was specifically created for the purpose of audit and assisting auditors likewise this is the committee which is specifically created for what for the CSR purposes then this committee is known as CSR committee and the CSR committee contains whom the board of directors and the detailed guidelines we are going to see this is just the definition which is given which is just the definition which is given so now before we move ahead before we move ahead what i request is that have a one time reading of page 9.33 whole page 9.33 one time reading of whole page 9.33 Have a one time reading of this from your module. Now, once you have read this, so now I request you to copy down this uh, two definitions. One is of CSR policy and another is of CSR committee. Then we move ahead. Copy down these two definitions.
Now, friends, we move towards the next, and that is administrative overheads. Now, what was happening when clear guidelines were not available? That if the company was required to do an CSR expenditure, let us say of hundred rupees, then from that hundred rupees, almost 80-90 percent were being spent on administrative things. So the actual benefit was not going to public at last. So then government thought to control and regulate the administrative overheads, and so government came up with the definition. that what they mean to say by administrative overheads now again in this administrative overheads there are two things what is included in administrative overhead and what is not included in administrative overheads both is covered in this particular definition Right, so let us have a look at it. Again, it's not that tough, it's very simple. Means oblique includes Expenses following expenses connected with CSR functions. and its projects one is the general management and second is second is the administration and then the important is excludes following expenses directly connected with CSR functions and its projects which expenses the expenses of designing of CSR functions or activities, the implementation, the task to implement the things, regularly monitoring and evaluation. So these expenses are not the part of admin, so you can bindas do, but those which are the part of administrative overheads, there will be a ceiling restriction which will be kept that only this kind of expenses can be done and this type of expenses can not be done. So likewise, there will be a regulation and control. So this is one simple definition of administrative overheads. And now one more, which is a bit important to understand, is of ongoing projects basically earlier there was no such definition given of ongoing projects but then later on government realized that many companies are doing the csr initiatives which cannot be completed within one year but it continues for more than one year which continues for more than one year so it's a multi-year project but for a period not exceeding three years right after the financial year with the expenses done afterwards up to maximum three years then such a kind of more than one year project is known as or activities known as ongoing project let us say for example 
if we are establishing a school in one village so it would obviously not be completed in one year or we are establishing one facility right medical facility where they get free treatment of their diseases so this is obviously going to take a time for it to establish so such projects are known as ongoing projects so multi year project undertaken by company in fulfillment of csr obligation so it's connected with csr having timelines maximum 3 years excluding the financial year in which it commences so let us say for example we started the project of establishing a hospital or a medical care facility in this financial year then apart from this if it extends for one more year or two more year or three more year after this then it will be a multi year project so maximum 3 years and also includes project which was not initially approved as multi year project but later on they realized but but duration extended beyond 1 year by dod based on reasonable that is genuine justification like for example we started one project and government was sure everyone was sure that yes it is going to be happen in 6 months but some situation comes like earthquake or flood or covid or anything comes and because of that if it's extend your one year and board of directors are the opinion that yes we should continue it then it will be part of what the ongoing project and then friends we have two more but they are very much normal that is of international organization and another is of public authority then international organization means certain activities which are done in collaboration with international organization so it is international organization means what the organizations which are notified by central government under united nations act that is international organization and we have uh, a right to information act not in our syllabus but in india so as in that they have defined the public authority similar is applicable here also so now i request you that before we move towards applicability the another main important part take down this last two important definitions one is of administrative overheads and another is of ongoing projects
So now friends, you should have a one time look at which page, then you can say page 9.34. And in that mainly you should focus on administrative overheads and on ongoing project because net profit already we have seen earlier an international organization and public authority are not that important. So just give me a minute to have a look at two important definitions, administrative overhead and ongoing project from page 9.34. So this is you can say mainly our part three there is various definitions which if you know then only you can understand the concept of CSR in a better manner. Now friends after understanding the definitions now let us try to understand that when on a company the CSR obligations will be applicable. So basically now we are going to discuss the fourth main stage of our journey. that is applicability of CSR obligations again and again we were saying that activities which are done in order to satisfy or in order to comply with the statutory obligations now when the statutory obligations will arise that is what we are going to see in this we have three things friends the one is which type on on which types of companies this will be applicable or basically you can say criteria and second is exclusion this two things we are going to see now if we focus on the very first that is criteria then you can say that CSR obligations Are attracted when specified companies specified companies attract specified limits now what is covered in specified company then you can say may it be public company may it be private company may it be holding company may it be subsidiary company or may it be foreign company and then they have specified that having branch office or project office in India but I am not writing that because we know that if any outside company is having a branch 
or office in India, that is place of business in India, it is deemed foreign company. So any type of company. But in this except except public or private company in IFSC for a period of five years. from the commencement of business. So if following types of companies are there, except IFSC company for the first five years, they are given relaxation. Specified companies, attracting any one or more specified conditions this is companies this is conditions during immediately financially means if the company specified company it attracts one or more of the conditions then 100% CSR will be there a its net worth minimum 500 crore rupees and net worth you know section 2 clause 57 which you understood earlier in this particular lecture itself or turnover minimum or net profit minimum 5 crores right so this is something that if any of this criteria so basically we have or in between because it's one or more. So if specified companies attract this specified criteria, on them the obligation of CSR will come. On them the obligation of CSR will come. And so what they are required to do, that is what we are going to see. But first of all, on them, the first obligation which will come is of CSR committee. They need to constitute the CSR committee. But wait, wait, wait. Before this, let us also see that exclusion part. That exclusion part. Right. Now, what this exclusion part says, right, then. You will copy down only the highlighted portion. Every company which ceases, stops to be a company covered under section 135 of the Act for the three consecutive, consecutive means
continuous back to back shall not be required to constitute a CSR committee and comply with the provisions till such time it meets the criteria okay means let us say in this financial year the CSR is applicable we attracted the criteria next year criteria is not respected still we are required to follow this section next year again the criteria is up to if up to three consecutive years the criteria is not attracted then we need to stop it till again the criteria is attracted uh you say sir no 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 no, no. we couldn't understand it let us have a case study on this Company is attracting criteria of net profit and we assume no other criteria is attracted. Let us say no other criteria is attracted. So we will focus mainly on net profit criteria. Year net profit. Let us say 27, 28, 28, 29, 29, 30, 30, 31, 31, 32, 32, 33. Let us say the net profit is 2 crore rupees, then 3 crore rupees, then 5 crore rupees, 6 crore rupees, 7 crore rupees. 6.5 crore, 4 crore rupees. Five crore rupees, four crore rupees, three crore rupees, five crore rupees, six crore rupees, five crore rupees, four crore rupees, three crore rupees, two crore rupees, two crore rupees. 4 crore rupees, 5 crore rupees. Likewise, if we see 33, 34, 34, 35, 35, 36, 36, 37, 37, 38, 38, 39. See, these years are not relevant. Mean is what? CS are applicable or not?
Now see, in 2021, the net profit is 2 crore. Is CSR applicable? No. Then 3 crore? No. Then 5 crore? Yes. Because we attracted the criteria. Then 6 crore? Yes. 7 crore? Yes. 6.5 crore? Yes. 4 crore? The criteria because of which we started doing CSR is for the very first year not attracted. Still, we will do CSR. Since this is the first year, we didn't attract an obligation. Then again, the net profit became 5 crore. So again, CSR applicable. 4 crore, yes, because this is first year. Aap bolo ki, sir, 26, 27 mein hua first year? Consecutive. Then 3 crore, okay, not attracted. Consecutively second year, but we need to do CSR. Because it is consecutive 2 years. But third year mein wapas attract ho gaya, CSR, 5 crore. 6 crore, 5 crore to do. Okay, 4 crore, still we have to do because it's first year. 3 crore, still we have to do because it's first year. 2 crore, still we have to do because it is third year. But now consecutively for 3 years, the criteria is not attracted. So if in 4th year, if criteria is not attracted, it will not do CSR. In 5th year, don't do CSR. But again, then it attracts in 38-39. Then again, the CSR will so that's what they say that's what this case study will copy it down that's what they say that every company which ceases to be a company for a consecutive two years one year no two year no three year yes then it is not required to comply with these obligations till such time it again meets the criteria I add one word here. So this is mainly with respect to you can say the applicability portion of CSR. Okay, when CSR will be applicable, then when a company, a particular type of company, goes for what a particular type of point. And yes, one more thing we need to remember that when we are talking of foreign company, right, then you can say that mainly you need to ensure specifically the provisions with respect to foreign company then you need to specifically see to it net worth or turnover or net profit shall be computed in pursuance accordance of section 381 so if i simplify that is based on balance sheet and pnl of its business operations Carried in India. So again, I clarified you this earlier that if a foreign company is having its business, a USA company is having its business in US in India, then the net worth for this particular section will not be the total net worth of that USA company. No, 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 no. It will be the net worth of that USA company which is in India. So accordingly, we need to say to it. So this also needs to be taken care. So this is mainly the portion of applicability that is when the CSR will be applicable so now we are requested to do one thing copy down this roman number four that is applicability also in a notebook and friends believe me the way we have discussed here is more than exhaustive than anywhere else covered so copy down this in your notebook
Now friends, we move towards the fifth main part. And if we have a look at it, now the fifth main part is basically with respect to CSR committee. And this, in this CSR committee, we are going to discuss few things. That is, one is composition. B is no need we will see that once CSR is applicable but there is no need of CSR committee then the disclosures of CSR committee then the duties of CSR committee Four things we are going to discuss about the CSR committee. Now, the very first, if we start with composition, right? Then, on every company on which section 135 is applicable, that that criteria of uh, net worth or turnover or net profit is attracted in immediately preceding financial year. Then from this year itself, from the year itself, it has to constitute a CSR committee. Right. Generally what will happen? Minimum three directors from that minimum one minimum one independent director. So out of that three directors, minimum one should be the independent directors. Now, there may be a possibility that in a company there is no independent director. So, let us do one thing. We try to classify this in a better way. Wait. Is company required to appoint? independent director under section 149 subsection 4 now we have already seen in our common concepts the concept of independent director that it is the non-executive director and attracting the criteria of independence so is the company required to appoint independent director yes then company will have independent directors so see corporate social responsibility committee consists of minimum three directors and minimum one independent director so minimum three directors having plus minimum one or you can say having minimum one independent director but in case company is not required to appoint independent directors then company will not 
have independent director because legally as per section 149.4 it is not required to appoint independent director then it does not have independent director then corporate social responsibility committee consists of minimum two directors and no need of minimum one independent director then there is no need of minimum one independent director this you need to keep in mind moreover what if private company with only two directors then in that case corporate social responsibility committee consists of two directors wo do directors se kya bani hogi committee fir maan lo if there is foreign company if there is foreign company then minimum two persons one will be authorized representative of foreign company that is person in india authorized to act on behalf of foreign company means whenever there is a foreign company it has to appoint in india one authorized representative who will act on behalf of it so the one will be that and other persons selected and nominated by foreign company so this is the way you can say the foreign company will have its committee and also the normal companies will have its committee now when there is no need of crc bear in mind company to do csr but no need of csr committee so it is not so the company is not required to do csr uh, company is required to do csr but there is no need of specific such separate committee when amount to be spent on csr not exceeding 50 lakh rupees when the first we will after this we will see to it that how much amount the company is required to spend if that amount is less than 50 lakh rupees or it's not exceeding 50 lakh rupees there is no need of csr committee the csr obligations will be discharged by the board of directors so in this case board of directors will discharge the obligations then the next is disclosures the board report 
shall disclose composition and composition of csr committee and contents of csr policy both of this should be disclosed every year in the board report right and this board report is prepared under section 130 this board report comes in and the last is with respect to this CSR committee the duty of CSR committee what is the work of particular CSR committee what the CSR committee is required to do formulate CSR policy we have seen in definition that what is policy then policy is a document it's a statement which has two things one is the guidance and direction second three things second is the guiding principles and the third is the annual action plan right then I recommend CSR amount to be sent means how much they should spend then they should monitor the CSR policy from time to time last to formulate recommend the whole year plan the annual action plan percent of CSR activity including list of approved CSR project means how we are going to or which projects we are going to do how we are going to do each and every modalities how we are going to use those funds the monitoring of projects The reporting mechanisms and impact assessment. All this is the duty of what the CSR committee, which is being formed. But in, keep in mind. once this has been decided by the csr committee (coughs) 
sorry is it necessary that compulsorily that is to be followed no may alter plan any time during financial year so these are basically the duties of csr committee now let's do one thing copy down this and then we go for module three start copying this start copying
Now see, based on this, there is one point. Yes, here in module on page nine point thirty six, one case study. ABC Limited is a company with a turnover of more than one thousand crore in a preceding three financial year. So, criteria is attracted. And having incurred a loss in one of the preceding three financial years, will it be required to comply with CSR? Yes, because any one of the conditions is to be fulfilled. And the mere point that company is not required, are uh, not earned profit, is not to be considered. So just have a look at this example six. Now read page 9.37 of module. Read page 9.37 of module. So now after understanding the whole provision of CSR committee, now let us move towards understanding the provisions associated with though company has constituted a CSR committee. So almost 80% things are being done by CSR committee. 
but still board of directors have certain responsibility so six point is duties of board of directors they are under some responsibility which is that responsibility the board shall after taking into account the recommendations made by the corporate social responsibility committee approve the csr policy and disclose the contents of such csr policy in its report and also place it on company's website so mean is to approve the policy to disclose the same in board report and to disclose the same on company's website that is the utmost responsibility of board of directors apart from this ensure that the activities are included in the csr policy are undertaken by the company means policy is actually implemented policy should not remain just on paper but whatever is mentioned in policy should be actually done by the company and the board shall mandatorily compulsorily disclose the composition of csr committee and csr policy and projects approved by board on their website if any for public access so more is another responsibilities to ensure that policy undertaken so all this are the main responsibility of the board of directors of the company so major responsibility is taken care by the csr committee but still this is the responsibility which board of director needs to ensure so copy down this also in your notebook start copying
Now, after seeing this, now let's move towards the seventh main provision. That is with respect to Amount of CSR expenditure. The amount of CSR expenditure and how much amount the company has to spend. Right, then see beauty shall ensure. The company spends in every financial year minimum two percent of the average of net profits made during. immediately preceding three financial years means if we are right now uh, it has been more than uh, seven years let us say eight years so what the company has to do in the preceding three financial years whatever is the profit divide by three and two percent of that should be spent for csr activities that's how the amount is to be decided now if we go for analysis of sin if we go for just analysis Only one year since incorporation. So it will be two percent of average of two percent of net profit of first year because it has been just one year and in the first year we attracted that obligation of CSR if two years since incorporation then it will be two percent of Average of net profit of two years. 
so it will be done like what the profit of two years total of that and divide that by two and whatever amount comes of that that will not be the csr expenditure of that minimum two percent So let us say if three years so two percent of average of net profit of three years so you can say the profit of three years is to be added and divided by two that's how the things is to be done Four year or more, more than two percent of average of net profit of average of preceding three financial years. So if it has been seven years, eight years, nine years, then also it will be that. And in case in any of the year there is a loss, no need to worry. The average will go down. And the average goes down of that average net profit minimum two percent is to be calculated and bear in mind the net profit is to be calculated based on section 198 after doing certain adjustments here which were specified in section 135 and that adjustments we already know so this is how we go towards the spending and bear in mind one very important thing is Let us say this year you are required to spend only 1 crore rupees as CSR but the initiative which you took in that you spend 1 crore 30 lakhs then in that case whatever excess 30 lakh you have spent can be set off against the requirement of CSR in the succeeding financial years as may be prescribed so that can be used for set off. If in any financial year, company spends in excess of obligation, the excess can be set off in succeeding financial or years as may be specified still yet no specification is came so in future years you can set off this year. so for example if this year we were required to spend 1 crore but we spend 1 crore 30 lakh so 30 lakh is in excess now in next crore again next year again we were required to spend 1 crore so if in next year we can set off this year's excess 30 lakh there so in next year we will be required only to spend 70 lakh rupees and if we spend that 70 lakh rupees then our obligation will be done so now copy down this important provisions with respect to amount of csr expenditure in your notebook start copying it
So see, based on this, we can lastly summarize it. Based on this. That the board of director of every company shall ensure that the company spends in every financial year at least 2% of the average net profit of the company made during immediately preceding the financial year. We saw this. And you also clarified where the company has not completed the period of three financial years since its incorporation, so then profit will be during such immediately preceding financial years. One more important point that the company shall give preference to local area or areas around where it operates for spending the amount earmarked, meaning kept separate for CSR activity. Means if your company is in Ahmedabad, right, does this profit in Ahmedabad, then try to spend that nearby to Ahmedabad. Or if your register is in Ahmedabad, but your uh, area of operations is in Maharashtra, then try to spend in Maharashtra also. So that the people, uh, the place from where you get the benefit, you try to give that benefit first to them. Not necessary, you should give preference. You can spend anywhere else also. And the last point. If the company fails to spend, okay, that we will discuss later on. It is with respect to unspend amount. But if excess has been spent, that is the paragraph. If the company spends an amount in excess of requirements, such amount may be set off against the requirement to spend in the succeeding number of years to come. And in the manner it is being specified right so and also the again clarified here that net profit shall not include such sums as may be prescribed if you remember that uh, profit from the foreign branches and second was the dividend income from the company on whom CSR was applicable right so this is the requirement with respect to the amount which every company on whom CSR is applicable is required to spend now friends after discussing the provision with respect to that how much amount is to be spent in CSR. Now we move towards the eighth main point. Which talks with respect to CSR expenditure. Which talks with respect to CSR expenditure and how the CSR expenditure needs to be done in this particular point we have discussion on three things with respect to the CSR expenditure the one is the administrative overheads we have already defined that what we mean to say by administrative overheads in our basic concepts part in our definitions part the second they talk with respect to surplus out of CSR activities what if, if we, are, we are doing some CSR activity and out of that we generate some surplus we generate some income in case many times it happens then what is to be done with that third we will discuss with respect to capital asset and fourth it talks with respect to excess CSR expense but what if excess CSR expense is done right that I'm going to discuss with you not right now but you can see or we will discuss right now also that's not an issue so these are the four things we are going to discuss in our present understanding with respect to CSR that how we deal with this particular CSR expenditure. Now bear in mind, the very first is the talk with respect to treatment of
administrative overheads. Now, why basically this provision came into picture was that many times it was been happening that a company was required to spend, let us say, X amount for CSR, 100 rupees for CSR, for doing good of others. Now, when we saw that from that 100 rupees, 90, 95 rupees are used for admin purpose. They have kept the staff, paying the salary to staff. And likewise, just for the sake of admin of that particular thing, they were spending majority of the amount. This was wrong. This was not acceptable. So they brought the provision with respect to that how much amount maximum you can apportion, maximum you can use it for CSR. If actually you are using more than that, then rest will be debited to your PNL. You cannot debit against the CSR expenditure. So in excess of 5%, if you are spending, that will not be the part of CSR expenditure. You need to make the payment out of the company's funds. So the provision came is maximum 5% of total CSR expenditure of the company for the financial means for present year if we found out the total csr expenditure how we found out the total csr expenditure the average net profit of past three years of that two percent if that two percent wala amount comes to let us say 100 rupees so out of that 100 rupees you can spend only five percent maximum for administrative purposes you cannot spend more than five percent for administrative purposes now, if I just make you revise that what is treated in administrative purposes and what is not treated, then we have already discussed earlier that administrative expenses includes all the expenses which is connected with general management and administration. So this should be maximum 5%. But if there is an expenditure which is directly connected with designing the project or actual implementation of project, or monitoring the project or evaluating the performance of the project that all are not treated as CSR, not treated as admin expense. So can this all be the part of CSR expenditure? Yes. So designing, implementation, monitoring, evaluation, you can spend to the extent you want. But of general management and administration expense should be maximum. How much? Then it should be maximum 5% of the total CSR expenditure. So first they kept a ceiling in order to ensure that an and who is under an obligation to ensure that these all things are done properly then it is the board of directors of government so this was first thing which has been talked upon by the provisions Now friends, the next we need to see is with respect to surplus arising out of CSR activity. Let me give you an example of this. As a part of our CSR initiative, we established one hospital for medical care. Now, in that particular hospital, there was one medical store, and we assigned that medical store to one pharmacist. And we had an agreement that we will get a rent for that. And apart from that, whatever medicines he sells at a subsidized rate. Even out of that, he will pay us the commission. Now this rent income and commission, because of this, overall CSR activity was having a surplus. Now can a company add this particular surplus which is it is earning from CSR to its routine activity? Then the answer is no. What is to be done? Either you can plow it back to the particular project and you can use it for that particular hospital, that is for that CSR activity. 
or else you transfer it to unspent account or you transfer it to schedule 6 or uh, to schedule 7 fund whatever you have created but you cannot plow it back to your routine projects so first thing very clearly this is surplus shall not form part of the normal routine business profit of the company. So what you should do is, then what needs to be done with this particular surplus when it is not forming the part of the normal business activity. Then you have three options. You can use it for same project or for annual action plan of company or you transfer to schedule 7 fund. Any of the option you have. Means this was the uh, profit which you are earning from the hospital medical care unit so you can use it for the same project then in that case what will happen surplus loud back so it will be utilized for the same project to be done in a better manner or what we can do is Transfer to unspent CSR account and use it as per CSR policy for your annual action plan. Then use it for your annual action plan or the next option is what if you are not going to do any of this then transfer to schedule 7 fund within Six months from end of financial year. You transfer it to schedule seven. So whatever you want to do, you can do it, but in no case, but in no case, this amount can be transferred to your normal profits. That needs to be taken care by you. Same project or the annual action plan or schedule seven fund. For whatever you want to use, you can use it. So this was one point. Then it also talks with respect to for capital asset. And they say that Yes, Ramon may be used for creation or acquisition. of 
capital asset. What's CSR? Means whatever amount we are required to spend for CSR, from that we can either construct some capital asset like hospital or school or building or something like that, or we can use that to acquire the asset. And bear in mind, capital asset. shall be held by registered CSR entity. Now what is this registered CSR entity? We will see to it in a later stage, but it covers the registered public trust or the registered society or you can say the section 8 company which is registered with uh, with companies in under companies act and is having the csr registration number right so that's why i'm saying registered csr entity we will see this what what is C registered csr entity at a later stage or csr project beneficiaries in form of self-help groups any project beneficiaries can also hold it we can hold means we can form one self-help group registered and it should be in their name or any public authority public authority means as per the rti act there are some public authorities government authorities we can help that asset in their particular name so this is the provision with respect to csr asset and they have very specifically clarified uh, this provision came into effect from with the amendment rules with the amendment rules right but before that also there was some CSR projects. So they told any capital asset created by company prior to commencement of amendment rules 2021 shall within a period of 180 days from such commencement, commencement comply with the requirement and 180 days may be further extended for a period of not exceeding 90 days with the approval of BOD based on reasonable justifications. So this can also be done in the sense what we need to do is we need to ensure that it is held either in the name of the so add this also means you can say that this will be the third part so this they mainly talk with respect to the capital asset creation and lastly they talk for That is basically you can say that excess CS expenditure means actual CR, CSR expense exceeds the minimum required CSR expenditure. Means if the company was required to do the expense of let us say 100 rupees. And actually the company spend in that financial year, let us say 140 rupees. I've discussed in brief for this in the last, in the last portion also. 
then what needs to be done? Treatment. Set of the excess amount which has been done. So set of the excess amount against the requirement under section 135. up to immediate succeeding three financial years moreover excess amount shall not include Surplus from CSR activities, we saw surplus, that should not be the part of that. And board resolution shall be passed. That we are going to do this with the excess CSR expenditure. So if all these conditions are fulfilled, then you can say this is how we deal with the particular CSR expenditure, which is done in excess of what the company was obliged to do. So now before we move ahead, I'd request you. Let's start copying this in your notebook. Start copying it.
So hereby we end up with this particular provision with respect to that what actually the treatment should be done with the CSR amount. So see to it, just you read this from the module. See this provisions which are seen on the screen. The one day talk with respect to overhead expenses and everything. Just have a one time reading of this from the screen. Gradually I'll scroll it. So hereby we end up with this particular provisions. Now once you have decided that how much amount we are going to spend on CSR, second about the administrative expenses is how much expense we are going to do and how much we are not going to record it. Now we move to the ninth point. This is with respect to <coughs> CSR implementation. That how the CSR projects are going to be implemented. That is what you are going to see to it. Now see, one thing you need to keep in mind is with respect to that in this CSR implementation, they are talking with respect to the main provision that how actually CSR is going to happen. Second. We are going to talk with respect to that can we involve the international organization 
in our CSR activity. That is what we are going to see to it, that how we can involve them. Apart from that, we are also going to see with respect to the ongoing projects which are going to happen. So the implementation basically drawn up into three parts. How the company is going to actually work out. The second part will be with respect to that can we take the support of the international organization? And the third is what if the ongoing projects are there? Now see the very first. <clears throat> provision with respect to implementation so <clears throat> basically Company can do CSR on its own by itself. Means company itself will do CSR. Means if there is Spark Limited company and on it there is an obligation of doing CSR, then the company itself is doing it. Or Getting it done by CSR entities. We will see what is this CSR entities in the in the video to come in the times to come. But basically, CSR entities what? Then you can say that company can have its own section eight company. Or any other registered section it company having three years experience or via any government organization or government trust by that also company can get it done moreover company can get it done by collaborating with other companies that is if there is spark limited and now car limited both are eligible to do csr that both collaborate with each other and they do the csr all this is possible but we need to see to it In case of joint activities, the CSR committees are able to do separate reporting. Means both the companies should be able to ensure that kitna amount they use karna tha and how much amount they have already used it. BOD shall satisfy that the funds to disburse have been properly utilized. And CFO or any other officer who is certified for this means eligible to check this yeah. 
shall certify the same. So collaboration is possible. But mainly you need to see to it that the separate reporting, actual utilization of funds and everything is ensured. <clears throat> Moreover, it also talks with respect to international organization. And what they say with respect to international organization? A company may engage international organization. Now what is basically this international organization? Then we talk with respect to it in the definitions wala portion. See this. <coughs> An organization notified by central government as an international organization as per the United Nations Privileges and Immunities Act 1947. So certain foreign organizations which are notified by the government. So our company can take the help of it. For what? For designing of the project or for monitoring of the project and evaluation of CSR projects as per its CSS policies as well as for capacity building of their own people for CSR. So mainly for CSR projects and for capacity building of employees an Indian company may take the support <coughs> of the foreign international organization and apart from that in case of ongoing project means the multi-year project which extends more than one year excluding the year in which it is started and it continues for maximum three years the board of the company shall monitor the implementation of the project with reference to the approved timelines and year wise allocation means that in how much year in which year how much tasks will be completed how much amount is to be allocated and shall be competent to make modifications if needed for the smooth implementation of the project within the overall permissible time limit and what is the overall permissible time limit it's three years so basically the task will be to monitor to ensure that approved timelines are adhered with to go for year wise allocation and if needed the modifications can also be done. So this is the main part which company needs to ensure when the company is ensuring the compliance the implementation of the CSR. So now before we move ahead let us copy down this much in our notebook. Start copying it.
<clears throat> now let us move at friends with our 10th main point to discuss with respect to unspent or surplus csr and plus or un unspent or surplus csr amount now how it goes this problem arises when actual csr expense is different from minimum csr expense to be done when there is a difference between this actual and minimum the points and the extra provision compliance needed to be seen that how we are going to do that so here the point will come of two things surplus csr expenditure this is a situation where actual csr expenditure is greater than minimum csr expenditure when you have spent more than what you are required to do then set off for next three financial year then we saw that the surplus amount should not be the part of this from csr project and board resolution needs to be passed on so this we have already seen it for the main agenda is unspare csr amount and this will amount when actual csr expenditure is less than minimum csr expenditure required to be done means as per the provision of 135 or that two percent of net profit provision we were required to spend 100 rupees but we have spent just 40 50 60 90 rupees so actual amount is less than the minimum required then what to be done then the very first point is with respect to it is that disclose reasons for sale in board report means when the company prepares a board report in that board of directors needs to specify the reason that why company is unable to spend what was actually minimum required this was earlier provision also but before amendment the provisions were stopping till here that you need to disclose it nothing else was being provided but now that we have a very strict guidelines treatment of unspare csr amount that how you will what you will do with that unspent csr amount now friends here we very well know the provisions or the point of uh, this ongoing project what was the point of ongoing project when the project is for more than one year if you remember that provision or uh, let me do one thing let me make you read this yes here it is just have a one time look at this ongoing project just a minute it's coming on the screen 
have a look at this. Right. Now, how the treatment shall be given for this unspent CSR form? So, now I'll ask a question. Does company has any ongoing CSR project in progress means is right now any project is going on which has started for more than one year a multi-year project and which is going to continue till maximum three years does company has any such projects in hand? Ask it. No. There is no ongoing project going on. Then in that case, transfer unspent CSR amount to where you will transfer it then it says to schedule seven fund that is a specified fund which is created under schedule seven you need to transfer to that. And what is the time limit? Within six months, from expiry of financial year. The day on which the financial year expired, from that within six months you should transfer this amount because you are not having any ongoing project so this fund should be transferred to that schedule 7 fund more provisions with respect to what this schedule 7 fund is as yet not came into picture later on it will be notified by the government but presently you should transfer it to schedule 7 funds but what if if the company is having ongoing project then in order to utilize for that ongoing project the company will transfer the unspent amount to one specific separate account which is open in a scheduled bank the company will transfer there and from that the company will keep on using the amount in the upcoming years that is what we are going to see to it then if the company is having any ongoing project then in that case though it's very much obvious that company is going to spend this amount also in the times to come so then what company needs to do
the very first thing which the company needs to do is open a separate bank account in a scheduled bank as unspent CSR account. I'll tell it as unspent CSR amount account. Unspent CSR amount account. Open that. We need to get that open. Then transfer unspent CSR amount to such unspent CSR amount account. Within 30 days. From expiry of financial year so from the expiry of financial year within 30 days you will transfer the amount to unspent account and from that you will keep on using from the for the upgoing project for the ongoing project unspent CSR amount then what will happen come need to use unspent CSR amount for ongoing project for three years you keep on using it now unspent CSR amount still unspent after expiry of three years means let us say what 100 rupees we were required to spend we spend only 60 so 40 was unspent and out of that 40 during the three years we spent only 30 so 10 is yet unspent so that needs to be transferred to schedule 7 transfer such unspent CSR amount to the schedule 7 fund within 30 days from expiry of third financial. Likewise you transfer it and this is how you should actually deal with the amount of CSR which is unspent. A very important provision so lucidly explained that you will once if you draw this particular diagram in your notebook you will be very 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 clear as to how the things are going on. Right so now I request you to copy down this in your notebook that is the unspent CSR account. Once we copy down this then we go for the module reading of the same. Start copying it.
clear copy in a very proper manner so that you can understand it well
read this from module friends Now, once you have read this, we move ahead with the 11th main point of our journey. That is with respect to the central government has any kind of power to give special instructions with respect to CSR to any company? Yes. So what the provision is? Special instructions with respect to CSR may be given by the central government by central government special instruction may be special direction means specifically only for one or two points or maybe general direction yani overall it affects the whole of the csr provision special instruction maybe for 
अकमनी और क्लास ऑफ एंड स्पेशल इंस्ट्रक्शंस विल बी एस सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट डीम्स सो एवरीथिंग इज टू बी डिसाइडेड बाय सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इज कंपनी और कंपनीज needs to comply with such special instructions if company is not complying with such special instruction penalty will be levied on them so this is one small provision with respect to that companies are required to comply with the special provisions or special instructions which are given by central government obviously it is with respect to the csr to be that so i request you to copy down this point also in your notebook copy this point in your notebook with respect to special instructions read this provision with respect to special instructions
now we move to the next point where point cs are integral as such uh, when you refer in a reference book or module you will not find such term but we will discuss that that what is the concept which are the eligible entity and which conditions they need to comply with that is what we are going to see in this particular csr entity basically when it comes to talking of concept so it is like a company may get csr done by an entity on its own behalf we are subject to entity is specified entity an entity fulfills the specified conditions means let us say if our company is required to do any csr compliance but company instead of doing on its own may get it done via some other entity but that entity should be specified entity and that entity should satisfy the specified conditions then in such case in such case though csr done by entity but deemed csr done by company so csr though done by that particular ngo or by trust but it will be deemed that the csr is done by the entity so in this second main provision is eligible entities which entities are eligible then the very first is section 8 company or registered trust or registered society established by company alone or established by company jointly with another company so spark limited has to do compliance and spark limited starts its own section company but start spark limited establishes its own trust its own ngo or own society or spark limited along with naukar limited starts one ngo established by central government or established by state government or established by someone else subject to it is registered under section 12a and 80g 
income tax act 1961 means now for example i have an ngo named sukrut trust and spark limited wants to do csr then spark limited can do via sukrut trust but that sukrut trust should be registered under section 12a and 80g of income tax act and having established track record of activities in similar area for minimum 3 years for minimum 3 years if this is so then i can get it done through such type of other registered entities or second is entity established under an act of parliament means by central government or entity established under an act of state legislature by events any by state entity any of this entity i can get the things done but bear in mind that such entities must be fulfilling the eligible conditions means they need to comply with some terms and conditions then only they can move it in first eligible entity to get registration done with ROC with effect from 1st April 2021 as under so this provisions came into picture after 1st April 2021 lodge form CSR 1 means the registration is to be done with central government but it is to be filed with ROC it is to be done electronically signed by entity electronically and verified by practicing chartered accountant or practicing company secretary or practicing cost accountant bear in mind first practice pca is practicing chartered accountant and last is practicing cost accountant and On submission of form on MCA portal, a unique CSR registration number will be automatically generated and likewise you can say the entity will be considered as 
registered with government and a company on whom the csr obligations are there can get the same work being done by such eligible csr entity which are registered with central government as under so copy down this provisions with respect to csr registration also in your notebook start copying it
Now let's read this from the module. See the page you can see on the screen. Or wait, let me enlarge it so you can read it properly. Start reading from module. So now friends, after understanding the provisions with respect to CSR entity and also reading it, now let's move towards the 13th point of our understanding that is of CSR reporting. That is whatever activities are done by a company. It's not, I told you in the initial beginning that it's not just sharing. It's something more than the sharing. So here at most reporting needs to be done. And that's why any company Indian or foreign company because we know that if foreign company attracts the CSR obligation and foreign company is also required to do the CSR expectation right then they required to do disclosures Any company attracting section 135. So first we are discussing with respect to Indian company. Required to do disclosures with respect to CSR policy projects and initiatives in form of 
annual report on CSR. becoming part of director's report, board report under section 1. So all the Indian companies are required to prepare their board report. Then in that board report, there will be a part of annual report on CSR and that annual report will give all the disclosures with respect to CSR policy, with respect to CSR projects and with respect to CSR initiatives. And if it's a foreign company, Then in that case, any foreign company attracting, then in that case, And next to balance sheet filed to ROC under section 381. So if it's a foreign company, it's not required to prepare board report. But <coughs> apart from board report, the company is required to file the balance sheet and PNL of their operations in India, specifically calculated to ROC. And in that, they need to attach this annual report on CSR. So this way, they need to give disclosures and also on website of company, they need to do some disclosures, do some reporting. BOD shall place following on website of company for public access. One is the CSR policy. composition of CSR committee and CSR projects. Policy, committee and projects, all this should be disclosed on the website of not saying sorry, on the website of company which is doing the CSR. So this is the requirement with respect to CSR report. Let's have a writing of this. First, copy down this paper. Start copying it. Copy it.
now we move towards the next point which is kind of a new provision which is added which was not there earlier in the concept that was impact assess means certain companies who have done a huge expenditure of csr they need to go for an assessment for an analysis that whatever expense they have done is that expense having impact what kind of impact it is so that this report will help that organization and many other organizations to ensure that which type of activities are to be done and when it should be done so here the very first point is which company to do or which company to get ia done ia stands for i am using is a short form as impact assessment so impact assessment is not to be done by every company but by company having on an average csr obligation of minimum 10 crore rupees during immediately three preceding or better during immediately so if during last 3 years on an average if the company has done an csr obligation of 10 crore rupees minimum then it has to get its impact assessment done of csr projects but the second point comes is whether impact assessment of all the projects impact assessments of which project just meaning adding two pages so impact assessment of which projects then you can say csr projects have an outlay means actual expenditure incurred of minimum 1 crore rupees and so 10 crore rupees is a limit that that company has to get its impact assessment done but of which projects all projects no of projects having a minimum outlay of 1 crore and cr says a projects which have been completed not less than 1 year before undertaking the impact study this projects needs to be assessed next is independent assets assessment by whom who will do the independent Will company will do? No, no, no. IA through an independent agency. The agency 
whose task will be this to provide professional services of impact assessment. They will do it. IA expenditure. The question arises whether you can book this expense of impact assessment as a part of your CSR expenditure. Then IA expenditure may be booked towards CSR expenditure for that financial year. which shall be lower of following, which two? Five percent of total CSR expense of debt financial year or Rupees 50 lakhs, whichever is lower, that much you can book towards CSR expense. If you are spending more than this, then rest will be borne by the company on its own. And the last is the report. Independent agency doing impact assessment shall provide impact assessment reports to company company to place impact assessment reports before board of directors that is it should be placed in board of directors and board of directors is to adopt it and company to include impact assessment report as a part of annual report on CSR and then this annual report on CSR is going to be the part of board and then you know that the board report will be given to all the shareholders along with the notice of impact. So shareholders will also be able to come to know that what actually <coughs> the impact is there of the CSR expenditure with the company. So very positive initiative being taken by government with respect to that certain big companies who are spending a lot shall get the impact assessment then of not all chota chota projects but of the crucial projects in order to see to it that whether whatever expenditure the company is doing is that having any impact on society or not. So copy down this also in your
Now let us read this CSR reporting from the module. Just have a look at this on the screen. Read it. Now let us move towards the third last part, that is schedule set. It's the ending portion of this particular CSR. But apart from that, we can also say that it was the starting that a company can do the things or the things which are similar to the activities which are mentioned in schedule so now we are going to have a look at schedule 7 
Uh, I'm not going to provide any code word for this. This will see from the module itself. Uh, it's not that important for every student to remember the activities covered in CSR Schedule 7. But we will highlight a few points. You will copy down also those points. And at least every time you revise this very important portion of CSR, at least read those points. The rereading might help you to answer the question if any asked. So that's what we are going to see now. That is our point number 15. That is activities specified under schedule 7. It says that activities which may be included by company in their CSR policy are as you will write only the keywords and will remember also only those keywords, not everything. Eradicating hunger, poverty, malnutrition and promoting health care. Means basically the activities associated with the well-being, with the physical well-being of a person. If you are doing something related to that, it will be a part of CSR. Promoting education, including special education and employment enhancing vocational skills. So talks with respect to education. What is employ enhancing employment enhancing vocational skills? That is teaching a person to repair the mobile, teaching the person to do color and all those things. Promoting gender equality, empowering women. Setting up hostels for women and orphans. Old age homes, daycare centers. So basically, doing things which promotes gender equality and supports the women. That was also one of the intentions. Ensuring environmental sustainability, ecological balance and protection of flora and fauna and animal health. Flora fauna means forest. So basically targeting the environmental things. So this may be the part of schedule 7. Now do one thing. Give the heading and what you will do is you will read the whole paragraph and then you will make the notes only of those things which you have underlined and those highlighted portion you will round it or you will also use a marker and will make it. Start the same right now. Copy in your notebook. Read a whole paragraph and copy only the underlined portion here.
the next protection of national heritage art and culture and sites of historical importance so basically supporting government for preservation and conservation of national heritage that would also be covered measures for benefit of armed forces veterans means those who have retired basically from army war widows means their spouse has died and they are dependent including CAPF and CPMF so basically focusing on armed forces and for their benefit if you do anything that's a part of CSA seven training to promote rural sport nationally recognized sport para olympic sports and olympic sports so doing activities connected with sports so all this will also be the part of csa so read whole and copy down only the underlined portion in the next contribution to prime minister's national relief fund and relief in emergency situation funds like pm cares fund and relief and welfare of scheduled caste tribes and other backward classes minorities and women so basically when you contribute to relief funds or emergency situations 
that will be the part of csr contribution to incubators what is incubators entity doing research and development or research and development project funded by government or any agency or public sector undertaking of government or contributions to public funded universities and other organizations aimed at promoting sustainable development goals of United Nations, including rural development projects for development of rural areas, slum area development. We have told slum area shall mean any area declared by the by the. government or any competent authority any law for time being enforced as slum area so slum area development activities and disaster management including relief rehabilitation and reconstruction activities disaster ke samay pe jo sari activities hai all this will be the part of csr so research universities rural development slum area development and disaster all this will be the part of csr activities start copying this
now we move towards the second last part. That is 16th part, various clarifications by government, that is Ministry of Corporate Affairs. These clarifications are broken up into two parts. One is general clarifications and another are few clarifications which are with respect to COVID-19. Earlier they were not there, but in COVID-19 it started. Okay. So the very first clarification, A1, that is in A, general clarification, the first point. Activities undertaken in pursuance. means accordance of CSR policy must be relatable to Schedule 7 and the entries in the Schedule 7 must be interpreted liberally so as to capture the essence of the subjects enumerated in Schedule. Enumerated means Assessments. So what they say that when you are reading Schedule 7, the activities, don't go thoroughly as it is. Then also it will be treated as what? CSR. So the list is an illustrative list. It's a literal, liberal list. Not a thorough list. Second. CSR activities should be undertaken in a project or program mode. Long term activity. One of events such as marathon, award, charitable contribution, advertisement, sponsorship would not be qualified as a part of CSR. So, no need of one off events. Once you do and you get the benefit for time being, no, no, we want a long term activity. This is not that relevant, it's simple, already covered. Any financial implies means any of the three preceding financial means. So, these are few important clarifications. Let us first copy down this much and then we move. So, again, you will do what? Point number 16. Clarifications in that capital A general clarifications and read the whole thing and copy only the underlying portions. Start copying.
Hope you are clear with this. Then the next clarification is with respect to expenditure incurred by foreign holding company for CSR activities in India will qualify as CSR spent of the Indian subsidiary if CSR expenditure are routed and it done through Indian subsidiary and Indian subsidiary is required to do as per section 150 of the UCS. UCS are you told that whenever we do any activity in foreign it is not qualified and says understand here Indian company is not doing in foreign the foreign company is doing in India for its own subsidiary company then for that subsidiary company it will be treated as CSR so for in there is an Indian subsidiary company which is required to do CSR and on behalf of that Indian subsidiary foreign holding company is doing CSR it's absolutely clear because see friends benefit is being received by Indians by Registered trust would include trust registered under Income Tax Act for those states where registration of trust is not mandatory. So, <coughs> registered trust means basically Section 12A and 80G, basically. And last, non COVID clarification is you know, uh, in trust. For Section 8 company, there are two types of donations. One is corpus, means it goes to the capital, kind of bundle of the fund. And second is used in day-to-day. -day. So day-to-day -day activity cor contributions are CSR. But corpus contributions will also be treated as CSR. As long as the entity is created exclusively for CSR activity or where the corpus is created exclusively for the purpose directly related to the CSR. So either that entity is specifically for CSR or the corpus is specifically for CSR. Then in that case, the contribution, the corpus contribution to that trust will be the part of CSR. So copy, read this and copy down this also in your
now we look forward to the next part of clarifications. Clarifications with respect to CSR on COVID-19. Before COVID-19, this were not the part of it, but then when the COVID-19 came, the World Health Organization told every government to treat it in a very crucial manner. Government gave the very first decision. That spending of CSR funds for COVID-19 is eligible as a CSR. If you are doing anything with respect to saving the people from this pandemic, from epidemic COVID-19. Later on, when vaccine was developed, government told that every activity for vaccination is also allowed. Spending of CSR funds for carrying out awareness campaigns, programs or public awareness campaigns on COVID-19 vaccination program is an eligible CSR. So if you do anything with respect to vaccination, it's a CSR. And if you do anything with respect to setting up temporary things to support COVID-19, spending of CSR fund for setting up makeshift hospitals, temporary hospitals and temporary COVID care facilities is an eligible CSR. So anything you do for COVID-19, CSR, vaccination, CSR, healthcare facility, because this is going to support getting India out of COVID-19 fast. So now I request you to read everything and copy down just the underlined portion in your notes. Start copying it, I'll keep on scrolling up. Read completely, just copy down the underlined portion. So capital B in our clarification will be COVID related and in that there are three clarifications.
And lastly, let us just see and note down the penalties associated with this. As you know that I always I tell that penalties, if you don't remember, it's fine. But for anchors, it's very important and one time reading is must. So what I request is that when we are going for the holistic completion of this, I would request that the penalty should be remembered. So this will be our last point. Point number 17, penal provisions, learn by heart. A, on company. If a company is in default in complying with the provisions, the company shall be liable to a penalty of twice the amount required to be transferred by the company to the fund or the unspent CSR account or 1 crore rupees whichever is less. Means if your fund is not, your company is not complying with its requirement that unspent amount which was either required to be transferred to CSR schedule 7 fund or to CSR account that double the debt or 1 crore whichever is less. This is the penal provision. And B will be on officers, those one default. So every officer, this you will write in B, the blue one, of company who is in default shall be liable to a penalty of one tenth of the amount required to be transferred by the company to fund or the unspent CSR account or 2 lakh rupees, whichever is. So company and officer both will be liable for that. So just lastly copy down this in your notebook.
So this was friends a complete analysis from my side as far as the CSR provisions were concerned. We went into almost a thorough analysis covering everything. Now I assure you that may you read the module, you have read it completely or may you refer Naukar Spiral or any of the references. I assure you that the provisions which are going to come in exam, you will confidently be able to pass this. So thank you friends for being with me and discussing provisions with respect to CSR. Thank you. This is CF Anil Shah signing.